the third chapter is enzymes almost all enzymes are proteins enzymes are proteins with catalytic property that means they speed up the rate of reaction like a protein enzyme also has a secondary and tertiary structure too if we look at the tertiary structure you will see a backbone of a protein chain folds upon itself and you see a criss cross arrangement where there are many crevices or we say pockets so each pocket each such pocket we say it as an active site so what we call an active site is a cleft or a pocket if we see it in a 3d structure of a catalytic protein into which the substrate fits in we said active site and a substrate and now what is a substrate the substance which is converted to product in a enzyme catalyzed reaction is a substrate that means if we see in a tertiary structure there is a criss cross arrangement where many crevices are found each crevice or pocket we said it has an active site in which in in an enzyme in an active site a substrate that which is to be converted into a product is gets attached to the active site so in the presence of that enzyme particular enzyme the rate of the reaction becomes higher we need to know how these enzymes speed up the rate of reaction see if you if in a chemical reaction a chemical compound undergoes two changes that is a, a physical change that means it simply refers to change in the shape that means no bonds are broken and another this is a physical process and another physical process is change in the state of their matter that means when ice is melts it, it becomes as water and when water becomes a vapor here what is going what is happening is just their matter is changed this is also a physical process if we see in a chemical reaction the 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 bondages are broken the bonds are broken and a new product is formed this is a chemical reaction so in a chemical reaction it undergoes a physical change and also a chemical reaction if we see barium hydroxide which with with sulfuric acid gives rise to barium sulfate and water what happen here is a chemical reaction takes place okay but in the presence of an enzyme what is happening is it speeds up the reaction if we see in the above reaction where barium hydroxide and sulfuric acid gives rise to barium sulfate and water there is no catalyst there in the absence of the catalyst a, a rea this reaction took place but here if we observe here carbon dioxide and water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase this is an enzyme it is a catalyst the product is carbonic acid see here the rate of reaction is getting speed up in the absence of an enzyme the reaction will be slow but in the presence of an enzyme the reaction will be about 10 million times faster so that is the uh, power of an enzyme see how do we understand the enzymes bringing such high rate of chemical reactions already we have an idea of an active site okay now what is a substrate the chemical which is converted into a product is called a substrate hence enzymes that is proteins with three dimensional structures 
including an active site convert a substrate that is s into a product p symbolically we can just write it down as s giving rise to p now it is very clear that the substrate yes has to bind the enzyme at its active site within the given cleft or a pocket the substrate has to diffuse towards the active site so it becomes a enzyme substrate complex where e is yes complex e stands for enzyme so if we see here an enzyme and substrate complex is formed during this state the substrate is bound to an enzyme active site where a new structure of substrate called transition structure is formed after very soon after expected bond breaking or making is completed that means when a substrate fits to an enzyme's active site an enzyme substrate complex is formed as a result the substrate gets transformed into structure of products the pathway of this transformation must go through a state called transition state structure we can represent this picturally by a graph where y axis represents the potential energy and the x axis represents the progression of structural transformation there you see you will notice the difference between substrate and product say the activation of energy without an enzyme and activation energy with enzyme see the the substrate undergoes a transition state a product also is formed in the presence of an enzyme and without the activation of an enzyme you can clearly see in the graph we will now see the nature of an enzyme action see each enzyme e has a substrate s yes, that is a binding site in its molecule so that highly reactive enzyme and substrate complex is produced that is enzyme plus substrate gives rise to es enzyme substrate complex is produced see this complex is short lived and it it forms as into new products okay that is p now enzyme plus substrate e plus s giving rise to enzyme substrate complex where it is a short lived and it's it is forming as enzyme and product enzyme along with products and this this is unchanged and at last enzyme and product complex is formed this enzyme and substrate complex formation has been explained with the help of lock and key hypothesis by emil fischer in 1884 where lock is the enzyme and key is the substrate only the correctly sized key that is substrate fits into the keyhole that is active site of the lock that is enzyme so emil fischer proposed this lock and key hypothesis later on induced fit theory induced fit hypothesis was proposed by e koshland in 1973 this induced fit theory states that binding of a substrate or some other molecule to an enzyme causes a change in the shape of an enzyme so as to enhance or inhibit its activity so let me like explain this very clearly first the substrate binds to the active site of an enzyme fitting into the active site 
then what happens the binding of the substrate induces the enzyme to alter its shape fitting more tightly around the substrate that means it the the, the shape of an enzyme all uh, changes where the substrate it allows the substrate to fit into it the active site of the enzyme now in its close proximity to the substrate break the chemical bonds of the substrate a new enzyme product complex is formed the enzyme now releases the products of the reaction and the free enzyme is ready to bind to another molecule of the substrate and this cycle repeats again and again so e plus s giving rise to enzyme substrate complex again an intermediate product enzyme and substrate enzyme and product complex and final product is enzyme and product coming out of it where enzyme is again ready for with its active site to to continue the another reaction free enzyme this is how the nature of enzyme is now let us see the factors that are that are affecting the enzyme activity so the factors that are affecting the enzyme enzyme activity depends on the temperature ph and also the concentration of the substrate on the enzyme activity temperature and ph each enzyme shows its highest activity at particular temperature and ph which is called optimum temperature and optimum ph its activity declines when both below and above the optimum value see if the if there is low temperature the enzymes will become a, in a temporary temporarily inactive state whereas if there is a high temperature the enzymatic activity will be destroyed that is because proteins are denatured by heating so at high temperatures the enzymatic activity is being destroyed another one is concentration of substrate with the increase in the substrate concentration the velocity of the enzymatic reaction rises at first the reaction reaches in with a maximum velocity where it does not exceeds any further because the enzyme molecules are very few than the substrate molecules and after saturation of these molecules there are no free enzyme molecules to bind with the additional substrate molecules so substrate concentration required to cause half the maximal reaction rate is termed as michaelis menten constant km in addition to temperature ph and the concentration of the substrate there are also some other factors that are affecting the enzyme activity there are some specific chemicals which bind to the enzyme what they do is they shut off shuts off that means they stops the activity of enzymes this is called inhibition so the chemical the chemical that stops the enzyme activity shuts off the enzyme activity these are called as inhibitors shutting off the chemical activity we call as inhibition and those chemicals we call them as inhibitors there are three types of these inhibitors one is competitive inhibitor the second one is non competitive inhibitors and the third one is feedback inhibitors and this conditions this processes are competitive inhibition non competitive inhibition and the third one is feedback inhibition when we come to competitive inhibitors 
the the inhibitors are closely resembling the substrate in its molecular structure and inhibits the enzyme activity with these are called as competitive inhibitors that means this these inhibitors are very closely resembling the structure su substrates structure in its molecular structures too and what they what they does is they inhibits the activity of the enzyme they are competing with the structure so these are called as competitive inhibitors the example for this competitive inhibitor is the inhibition of succinic dehydrogenase by malonate which closely resembles the substrate succinate in its structure such competitive inhibitors are often used in the control of bacterial pathogens so here competitive inhibitors they compete in binding to the enzyme because of its structural sim similarity what happening what what happens here due to the competitive inhibitors is the enzyme action is getting declined in non competitive inhibitors the inhibitors has no structural similarity with the substrate and forms enzyme inhibitors complex that means in non competitive inhibitors the structures of the substrate and enzyme has no similarity but what happens here is it forms an enzyme inhibitor complex where it fits to the active site as a result of this what is happening is the the reaction the rate of reaction is getting decreased and the structure of the enzyme is also changed as a result of this catalysis cannot take place example is metal ions of copper mercury silver etc examples of non competitive inhibitors and the third one is feedback inhibition feedback inhibitors in this feedback inhibition it is a cellular control mechanism in which an enzyme's activity is inhibited by the enzyme's end product that means when enzyme is undergoing many reactions a product is formed and what is happening is this product is inhibiting the first part of the reaction so this is the feedback inhibition so there are three kinds of inhibitors one is competitive the second one is non competitive and the third one is feedback inhibitors these are the factors the that are affecting the rate of enzyme activity